Hey, what's up, everybody? It's James with Boxcar Visual, and uh, I'm going to talk about shoes. People from all different walks of life are a part of car culture, whether they're into JDM tuners or they love classic British sports cars or they're scraping together every dollar that they have so they can run a spec Miata on the weekends or they have tons and tons of dollars and they go out and buy an Aventador because it looks awesome and they love the way it sounds when they hit the loud pedal. Now, because of this, people with drastically different style preferences still kind of all need the same thing out of a shoe when they're driving. So this is a list of 10 great looking casual shoes from very different corners of the style universe that are still really good for driving. First, I think we need to establish what actually makes a really good driving shoe. And for that, you can't get better than something that's purpose built for driving like this racing shoe right here. And all these shoes basically have the same four features. First feature is they all have a thin flat sole with not a lot of tread on it. And that's so that they can get a really direct feel with the pedals. Uh, feature number two, they're all really thin. And that's because performance cars and race cars usually have their pedals really close together. If you have a lot of bulk, it'll get in the way. Uh, feature number three is that they have durable edges. The sides of the shoe is really durable. And that's because drivers actually use the side of their shoe when they're driving, whether they're uh, just resting their foot against the footwell or they're doing heel and toe downshifts, which are sadly becoming a little bit of a lost art. And uh, feature number four is what's called a rolled heel. And this is where the sole of the shoe extends up towards the Achilles and it's rounded off. And this serves two purposes. The first is that uh, when the driver's shoe is on the floor of the car, the rounded heel gives them a very linear feel. And the other reason is durability. You don't want your heel getting separated from the rest of the shoe. So all of the shoes on my list have most of these features, at least. They might not be perfect driving shoes, but they offer a great function versus fashion ratio. Okay, time to get started. First shoe on the list is the Vans Old School, and this one is kind of low-hanging fruit, to be honest, because it's already super popular. If you go to any autocross event or, you know, any drift session or any modern car meetup with more than, like, 20 people, you are going to see people wearing this shoe. It's always been the kind of cool kid skater shoe, like, ever since Tony Hawk's was just a young kid doing his hand planters on his half tubes with Stanley Peralters and I don't know, whatever. It's just, it's a great shoe. It doesn't age. It's like the Paul Rudd of sneakers, which Paul Rudd legitimately doesn't age. It's really weird. I don't get it. Anyways, the Vans Old School comes in a whole bunch of different colors and designs, including checkered flags and whatever the hell this is. Their flat sole, narrow toe, and thin canvas upper make it a great shoe for driving. I've owned a ton of these shoes and I love them, but the one thing that I don't necessarily love so much is that the edge of the sole is like a really harsh 90 degree angle. And if I drive for a long time, it makes my heel uh, fall asleep. But who knows, maybe that's just me. New Balance shoes traditionally have pretty big chunky heels and bulky soles. And to be completely honest, I genuinely thought that they only made two styles of shoe, this and this. But turns out I'm completely wrong on that. They make a whole bunch of different shoes and a lot of them look awesome. They started making skate shoes all the way back in 2013, and they did an incredible job of making a good looking skate shoe that still holds on to a little bit of the classic New Balance style. And I think the best looking of their skate shoes is the Numeric 288. Not only is it good for skating, but it's also good for driving. It actually has a really firm sole, probably more firm than you would expect from a casual shoe. So yeah, it might take a little longer to you know wear in when you're walking around town, but for driving, you actually get more feedback from the pedals because of it. Loafers are the original driving shoe. Long before anyone really cared about driver safety other than Sir Jackie Stewart, a lot of drivers would wear loafers when they raced because they fit the bill. They had thin soles, they were low profile, and they were really durable. And no one has ever, ever looked cooler wearing loafers and white athletic socks than Ayrton Senna driving around Suzuka in the NSXR that he helped develop. There are a ton of really similar looking loafers on the market, and a lot of them even have a rolled heel that's designed specifically for driving because of their history. Now, if I have to pick one, I'm gonna pick a slipper-loafer combo 
the UGG Ascot. They're mega soft, comfy slippers that you can wear outside. They're pretty form-fitting. They have a minimalist rubber sole and a rolled heel. And I know this has absolutely nothing to do with driving, but if you wear them long enough, there is a chance that you will become the best quarterback in the history of the NFL. And I say that because Tom frickin' Brady was basically washed up. He was at the tail end of his career, and he was about to ride off into the sunset with his supermodel wife. And then he gets sponsored by UGG Boots. Uh, starts wearing the ascot slipper every day, decides, hey, you know what? My feet don't feel that bad anymore. I'm going to keep playing. He goes on and wins three more Super Bowls, breaks a whole bunch of records, and becomes the greatest quarterback of all time. So think whatever you want about Tommy Touchdown, but you cannot deny that the UGG ascot is a comfy slipper. <laughs> For a long time, athletic shoes had big soles with like bubbles and springs and Lord knows what else in them. And they were probably only marginally better for driving than ski boots. But luckily over the years, the trend has moved towards pretty minimal cross trainers. Ultra is a brand that specializes in zero drop shoes. And that just means that they have flat soles. Now, most of their shoes are really light, but they're pretty bulky with a lot of cushioning. The Solstice XT is the exception. Ultra shoes are massively comfortable. And if I was a sporty spice gym rat and a car guy, 100%, this is the shoe that I would wear. All right, staying with the sports theme, the Adidas Super Sala is an indoor soccer shoe that's also ideal for driving. It's got a really cool athletic sporty look to it, and it's super durable, which obviously it has to be when it's handling all of those invisible obstacles that soccer players seem to always be running into. I know this might seem like an odd pick, but I think as electric cars become more common and more affordable and a lot more fun to drive, that we might see more of the, you know, kind of hippie types on track days. Obviously, burning fossil fuels needlessly just because it's really fun and sounds awesome doesn't really vibe with the whole tree hugger thing. Who did this to you? And I know because I kind of am one, and it's something that I think about, but also it's just so much fun. So I predict that as cars become further removed from their environmentally damaging past, these tree huggers are going to discover how much fun oversteer is, and they're going to need a shoe that's just as woke as they are. The Tom's Cloudbound is a minimalist slip-on with a rugged cloth upper and a thin sole that will guarantee that you feel all of that minute feedback from your Tesla pedals. Now, Tom's are made from natural hemp and organic cotton and recycled polyester, and part of the profit from every shoe that's sold helps impoverished communities. And if you're the type that thinks meat is murder, don't worry, Tom's shoes are vegan. Merrill is probably best known for their hiking boots, and they're my absolute favorite. I love them. They look good, they're comfortable, they're durable, they're pretty lightweight, but they're not great driving shoes. Now, Merrill also makes a shoe that's for trail running. It's called the Trail Glove 5, and that thing definitely checks all of the boxes for a great driving shoe. It comes in a bunch of different color combinations, which I love, and when you're going on a hike, a lot of times to get to that hike, you have to drive up windy dirt roads. So this is a shoe that will perform just as well dancing around the pedals of your leveled STI as it will on the trail. Okay, so up until now, all the shoes really haven't been in any particular order, but these last three are absolutely my favorite picks and all for very different reasons. I know that boat shoes can maybe sometimes look a little bit pretentious because you're kind of maybe half implying that you spend your leisure time on your sailboat or whatever. But objectively speaking, these particular shoes, I think, look phenomenal. Swims has done such a good job of making a modern design that differentiates itself just enough from a traditional boat shoe. And they're super lightweight, super comfortable. They breathe incredibly well. These are absolutely the best summer shoes that I have ever worn. And the way that they're designed almost makes you think that they had a driving enthusiast in mind when they made them because they have a perfectly flat sole. Their cushioning is super thin, but also really effective. And their heels are perfect for driving. Now, I'm not much of a boat shoe guy, but I just love the way that these things look. And they keep looking fresh for ages. So again, I just can't say enough good things about swims. The one thing that I will say is that they're a little bit pricey maybe for what you're getting, but if you go on Swim's website, usually you can find a whole bunch of their shoes that are marked down. And again, on a hot summer day, driving around or at the track, these are absolutely my number one choice. 
The Saucony bullet isn't super common, and that's one of the reasons why I absolutely love the thing. It really stands out, and it's one of the best classic looking shoes you can buy. It's got a phenomenal value, it's unbelievably comfortable, and one of the best shoes for driving that I've ever worn. It was originally a track shoe back in the 80s, and then Saucony took the spikes out and made it street legal. It's got a really thin sole with just enough tread where you can wear it anywhere, but it doesn't get in the way of driving. It's just wide enough to be super comfortable without being bulky at all. And the sole is rounded all the way around the shoe. So it just gives you a phenomenal driving experience. I genuinely don't own another pair of shoes that's as comfortable as this one. The Onitsuka Tiger Mexico 66 is probably my number one overall pick. I just, I love it. It looks amazing. It feels great. It's amazing for driving. I love the history of the brand. It's just a classic. The shoe is actually a beefier version of a Tai Chi shoe. And if you think that it's got the ASIC logo on the side, well, <laughs> it does. Uh, you see, Onitsuka was the original name of the shoe company back in Japan in 1949. And it didn't become ASICs until the 1970s. And they slowly phased out all the original designs. And in my opinion, started making really weak looking street shoes and for some reason, really awesome looking wrestling shoes. But in the early 2000s, they brought back the Onitsuka brand and some of the vintage designs, and they look so good. They come in a whole bunch of different color combinations. I would definitely suggest the beige and grass if you want something that's pretty low key. And if you happen to be in a bloody showdown with several members of the deadly Viper Assassination Squad because you're getting revenge on them for trying to murder you during your wedding ceremony, and you need a cool shoe that matches a cool outfit that you picked out specifically for the sword fight to pay homage to Bruce Lee's 1978 Kung Fu classic game of death where he fights to the death against Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, then I would suggest the yellow and black. And yes, I'm definitely referencing Kill Bill. I love that movie. I love Bruce Lee movies. I love martial arts and I love driving. And that's why the Onitsuka Tiger Mexico 66 is my number one choice. Thank you everybody for watching the video. I love doing these things and I'm doing them just for fun. It genuinely makes my day when I can entertain people. So leave a comment below with what shoe you think should have been on the list and please consider subscribing to Boxcar Visual's YouTube channel. I'm trying to do a new video every week or two. So if you hit the notification button, then when I upload a new one, you can be the first to know. Yeah. <laughs>